Welcome to Countout. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the present value of an ordinary annuity using the formula. In our previous lessons, we looked at how to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity and other time value of money calculations using the formula. So you'll find the links to all those lessons in the description below. Otherwise, what is the present value? Well, this is the calculation of the value today of a series of payments made at the end of specific period. Hence, ordinary annuity. So it's the present value of an ordinary annuity. So that is what it is. At a specific interest rate, you will be able to find out what this series of payments will amount to today. And we'll go through a few examples to show you how to calculate them. So why ordinary annuity? Well, when payments are made at the end of each period, the annuity is known as ordinary annuity. So that is why it's called an ordinary annuity. Whenever you have payments being made at the end of specific periods, so at the end of particular periods, it is known as an ordinary annuity. An annuity due is when payments are made at the beginning of the period. And we did those lessons as well. You'll find the links in the description below. Otherwise, what is the formula for the present value of an ordinary annuity? Well, here it is. Present value equals PMT 1 minus the sum of 1 divided by 1 plus i to the power of n and you divide all that answered by i okay so what do these letters stand for pmt is the annuity payment made at the end of each period so whatever payment you're told is made at the end of each period that is pmt or that is known as the payment i is the interest rate and it can be written as I or R. So they both stand for the interest rate or they both mean the interest rate. So if your formula might have R. It will mean the same thing as I in the interest rate. And N is the number of compounding periods. Now you will note here, I didn't say it's the number of years. It's the number of compounding periods. Why? Because if you have more than one compounding per year, it, they compounding periods will be different from the number of years and you'll take you should take note of this note that i'm going to mention here at the bottom and i've mentioned them in many of the lessons that we have done before if there's more than one compounding per year you divide the interest rate by the number of compoundings per year to get i okay that is to get the interest rate applicable day so if you have more than one compounding if the interest rate or if the interest is compounded more than once a year you will divide the interest rate you are given by the number of compounding per year to get i that's the one that you will put into the formula and you'll see how it will work with the help of the examples we're about to go through and then you multiply the number of years by the number of compoundings per year to get n that is why i say that n is not mainly or it's not basically the number of years if it's compounded more than once a year you will have to multiply the number of years by the number of compoundings per year to get n that you will put in there and you'll see now with the help of the examples but what this basically says is that the number of compoundings per year if it's more than one it will affect your i and your n so bear that in mind so let's get into the examples here in the first example, we are told that John wants to apply for a loan payable over a period of five years from a bank that charges 12% interest per annum compounded annually. If he can only be able to pay back 10,000 rand per annum, what is the loan amount he will get? What is the loan amount he will, he will get? So you can see here we are given what he will be able to make as a payment at the end of every year. Okay. And then we're also given the interest rate, which is 12% per annum, but it's compounded annually. So it's not compounded more than once a year. So again, we won't do the division and we won't do the multiplication with the I and the N because it's only compounded once per year. So let's see our formula again. Present value equals to PMT, which is the payment. What is the payment? Well, it's the 10,000 rand because it's, it, we are told here that if you can only be able to pay back 10,000 rand per annum. So that is the payment. So you put that under PMT, 10,000 rand. And then 1 minus the sum of 1 divided by 1 plus I. What is I? I is the 12% interest rate. Remember, it's compounded annually. So we don't have to divide it by anything. So it's, you put 0 0.12. Make sure you put it as a decimal. It will help you when you're doing the calculation. So 0 0.12. Otherwise, if you want to know how to get 0 0.12, you just take 12 divided by 100. 
it's going to give you 0 0.12 to the power of n what is n n is the number of years in this case because it's compounded only once so n will be 5 so that is what you do when it's compounded only once you don't have to multiply the number of years by anything unless it's compounded more than once and you'll see that in the second example so n is 5 and then once you've gotten that you divide that by i which is the 0 0.12 from the 12 percent we have now when you're punching it into your calculator you can start you make sure you know how exactly how you're going to punch them into your calculator right so i usually start with uh, this one here one plus i and then to the power of n once you have that answer you'll just take one divide by that answer and then once you have that answer you'll take one minus the total answer you have received here and then you divide it by the interest rate of 12 0.12 if it's this calculation that you're doing and then once you've done whatever is in this bracket you just multiply it by the payment and then you should get your present values so let's see how that looks present value equals to the 10,000 rand payment times 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.12 to the power of 5 and then you divide it by 0 0.12 and then once you've gotten that full answer you just multiply it by 10,000 and it should give you what your present value of the ordinary annuity is and what is that present value of an ordinary annuity it is 36,047 rand 76 cents and that is what the answer is so i'm sure if you punch it into your calculator you should be able to get the same answer if you don't then you have not uh, done the calculation correctly I hope it's making sense so far with making use of this formula that we are given. Let's look at the second example quickly. John wants to make an investment that will pay him 2,000 rand every month for the next three years. If the investment offers an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly, how much should he invest today? So here John wants to receive equal installments for the next three years. Right? He wants to receive 2,000 rand every month for the next three years. And he wants to make a one investment today that will enable him to receive that 2,000 rand every month for the next three years. And remember, he's going to be earning interest of 12% per annum and it's compounded monthly. So now we have compounding, which is more than once a year. So let's see our formula again over here. What is the payment? Payment is 2,000 Ren. So we're going to put the 2,000 Ren over here because it's the payment he wants to receive at the end of every month for the next three years. And then one minus one divided by one plus I. What is I? Well, here we have 12%, but remember that note that I mentioned at the beginning. If we have more than one compounding per year, you take the interest rate you are given, which is in this case 12%, divided by the number of compounding per year. Well, it's compounded monthly and we have 12 months in a year. So it's going to be 12% divided by 12 months. So 0 0.12, like I said, you put it in decimal, divide by 12 will give you the I that you'll put in here. And then to the power N, what is N? Well, N is the number of years times the number of compoundings per year. And in this case, we have 12 compoundings because it's compounded monthly. So three times 12 months will give you the N. And then you divide that by i what is i it's again the 0 0.12 divided by 12 months it will give you the i so with the i remember you divide and with the n you multiply and let's see how that looks 2000 rand payment times 1 minus the sum of 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 12 months because it's compounded monthly and then to the power of 3 times 12 uh, 12 compoundings per year and then once you have that answer, you divide by 0 0.12, divide by 12 compoundings per year. And then once you have that answer and you finally multiply by 2000 rand payment and you will get your present value of an ordinary annuity, which is 60,215 rand and one cents. That is how much John should invest today if he wants to receive 2000 rand every month for the next three years in, invest, in an investment offering an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly. I hope this has made sense. Now, here we have looked at examples where we have the same payment being made 
at the end of every month or at the end of every year as we have seen with the two examples it's the exact same amount which is being made every month it's just like a home loan where you make the same amount of payment every month until you pay it off but what happens in an instance where you're investing in a project or you're contemplating in investing in a company or a project but the cash flows are different amounts every month what do you do in that instance well we have another lessons where we have done what is called the net present value using the for, using the table and using the formulas as well so you'll find the links in the description below to that lesson where we do the net present value otherwise if you have gained value from this lesson if you have learned something please consider subscribing to this channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers